Welcome to episode number 53 of the Marine Layer Podcast. We welcome on Ty Pete, 2023 Mariners first round pick. One of the more fun conversations we have had here on this program. We'll talk a little bit about his on-field and his off-field life. We'll also talk about Julio Rodriguez and Andres Munoz winning some monthly awards. And George Kirby having some very interesting 2023 splits. Before we start the show, reminder to you guys, if you're listening on our audio platforms, go over to YouTube, watch us on our video side too, hit subscribe on YouTube, like, comment, and turn the notification bells on as well. If you're watching on YouTube, check us out on the audio side too, on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon. Go follow us, download the episodes, leave us the five-star review. The reviews and the downloads really help us out big time, and it only takes a couple extra seconds, guys. And then on social media... Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube Shorts. Follow us on there at Marine Layer Pod. Let's get it rolling. And we welcome you to this ish edition of the Marine Layer Podcast, part of the Just Baseball Podcast Network, recording here on Monday, September 4th. And they weren't kidding, Lyle, when we finally realized we're back in a division race. The vibes get a little tense around here when, when the boys have a bad weekend. <sighs> well, especially when the games that favor you are starting to run out we know that schedule at the end of the year is creeping up and creeping up and creeping up road trips are never easy especially these long east coast road trips but Mets are a sub 500 team the reds are solid but not better than the mariners it feels like games you've got to win and and they're not winning them right now and maybe the most frustrating aspect of it too and i, I sent you this stat yesterday that absolutely checks out the Mariners, since the start of the A's series, have given up 14 hits on 0-2 counts. Mariners pitchers, that is, tied for the third most in baseball during that span. And I'd say over these last four games, the Mets series and then the opener against the Reds, which we're sitting here today recording after on a Monday, checks out. <laughs> and it's kind of annoying. And, I, and I'm glad I wasn't going crazy. Yeah, they have not put guys away. You look at Brian Wu even today on Monday, he had a bunch of two strike counts in those first couple innings, and then it led to hit by pitches instead of strikeouts. And are we concerned? I don't know if concern's the right word. Are the Mariners still one of the better teams in baseball with the way they've played over the last well, month? Yes. Uh, now, Brian Wu. Uh, I, I was actually just directing that at him, actually, before before my general question. I didn't love that his velo was down today. That wasn't a good sign. His velo was down and the amount of just non-competitive pitches he was throwing before, especially to that at bat to steer where the three run homer that really put the game out of reach where it's like non-competitive pitch, non-competitive pitch, non-competitive pitch, 93 down the middle. And then that one goes over the center field fence. So I was like, yeah, not, not loving that. Let's see what he does in his next start. I think that'll be more telling. Yeah, I think so too. So Luke Weaver obviously didn't pitch over the weekend, not really in the Mets series. And you were, we were wondering after Kirby got bounced on Sunday where he was. Well, I was assuming that Luke Weaver was coming into this game, which he did eventually come into, and he was supposed to maybe piggyback Brian Wu. But I don't even think Scott Service and company thought Brian Wu was going to go this short and look this bad today. So it's as of right now, it'll be 10 days in a row Mariners have without an off day. Bullpen has already been taxed by three subpar starts in a row, Castillo, Kirby, and now Brian Wu, and it doesn't get any easier. And this is where the pressure kind of mounts because the division lead sitting right now is a game, but I believe you're going to be tied technically with the Astros in the standings after today. They're taking care of the Rangers this afternoon and your playoff buffers shrinking as well. So it's like a buckle up, grab your bootstraps. It's going to get intense this month of September. People are going to have, people are going to be nervous and people are going to be kind of clenching their, their jaws a little bit. If that's the right terminology, what, right? Clenching your jaws, clenching your right? jaws. Yeah. I mean, people, I mean, people usually say clenching something else, but you can clenching your jaws works. I do want to, be fair to Brian Wu here. I mean, there's an emotional side to being a fan always, but the other side of this is he's really only had two true blow up starts this year, including today. And to be honest, he kind of salvaged it. Now they still lost, but his final line wasn't that different than Luis Castillo's was in the Mets series. So I don't want to hold those two to different standards. 
I so it wasn't good what Brian Wu did today, but it didn't end up being totally disastrous either. Right. I think the Castillo and Kirby starts were more frustrating and more disappointing than than Brian Wu today. And you also have to understand Brian Wu pitching in uncharted territory, as we highlighted in our last episode on Friday. Really, I mean, he's so far past what we expected him to throw innings wise this season that everything from here on out is really unknown in his sense. So if he's just getting tired at this point, I mean, can you be too surprised? I don't really think so. No, you can't. The problem is they are relying on him now because he is the fifth starter. He is expected to go every fifth day in a time where the Mariners need every win they can get. And we keep saying it, especially with the schedule the last two and a half weeks of the season coming up closer and closer. But the other side to it is you have to cap some level of expectation for Wu as well. Which is going to make those other four starters that much more important. And they're going to have to shoulder that much more of the load. And it showed this weekend when two of those four guys aren't carrying their weight in the rotation, especially your two aces, the two guys we sat here on this podcast and said, okay, well, who's starting game one? And then they both go out versus the Mets and don't make a compelling case for that sense. So uh, it's uh, it, it's a balance, right? It's it's a balance of what we'll see. I was kind of disappointed in, in Castillo and Kirby. Kirby mostly, I'm just hoping he's still healthy, I guess, because he got pushed back because he was sick and Well, he didn't pitch like he's sick. We'll talk a little bit about George Kirby here later on in this podcast. We do have some house cleaning things to to clean up here. If you've been paying attention to our social media pages, I believe we've mentioned it on this podcast before, but we'll reiterate it. We partnered with Chasing Aces Golf to give away some Mariners tickets, three Mariners tickets to be exact. The drawing for this charity raffle, all the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds of this giveaway goes to Paws. Paws helps rescues and wild animals find homes and it's a really good cause and we're really happy to send our proceeds to them so we're happy to partner with chasing aces golf in this sense to give away three tickets section 117 row 40 for the 916 dodgers mariners games that's saturday night dodgers mariners best ticket in baseball that night you're gonna want to be there and you can get these three tickets for just twenty dollars by donating to our charity raffle uh, the proceeds going to pause.org. If you'd like to find some more information on this, go to the Chasing Aces Golf Instagram page. All the details are in their bio. They have a post on it with the, the Dodgers slash Mariners logo on there, and they tagged us in it. All the details are in there. You can click the link in their bio and find out everything you need to know to how to enter the raffle, where to donate to, and if you want to donate extra and, and submit multiple times, feel free. And all the proceeds, again, go to a good cause. And if you end up with some great tickets, that's good as well. Again, that's our charity raffle with Chasing Aces Golf. We've also posted them on our social media a couple times. Currently, as we're recording on Monday, we have a story up with the link in it. But that will go away by the time this podcast publishes. So Chasing Aces Golf on Instagram if you want to get in on that. $20 entry for the charity raffle. If you're a podcast listener who ends up being the winner of those tickets, which by the way, the winner is going to be decided on September 14th. So just a couple days before that game. If you're the winner of that raffle and you happen to be a podcast listener or you follow our social media channels, whatever, DM us, tell us you're going to be there more than happy to meet up before the game and chop it up for a little bit. Talk some Mariners, really whatever you want. So if you win those tickets and you listen to this show, let us know seriously and more than happy to come meet up. Yeah, it it should be good, and it's going to be a fantastic night for baseball. So it sounds like a win-win no matter what, if you're putting your money towards that. Yeah, for sure. Are we ready for our second housekeeping thing here? Yeah, I'm ready for it, dog. Do you have your speech ready? (sighs) Okay, I'm going to try to do this. feel like you're back in class right now. It's like you're standing in front of the classroom. Okay, Mr. Goldstein, ready for you to present your science project to the class. Except, as we talked about in our last Speak Your Mind, I hated every single second of school, especially science, where this... And no, yeah, I'll say, notice how I chose science. You don't, you didn't think I forgot that it was your worst subject, so I'm expected... So you should have put that same level of preparation as you had to get ready for a science test into what you're about to, to pitch to the podcast listeners. The difference here is I actually care about this. This is important, unlike science. I know, but it requires the same amount of effort for you to pass and, and continue. I'm going to try to channel my inner Pat Riley here from winning time. I've been watching a lot of winning time, but you have heard us mention this now a few times over the last month that 
we are going to be out and active at the ballpark during Angels Week for the final time that Shohei Otani comes to town before free agency. We have talked about we're going to be handing out index cards. We are going to do that. We've talked about we're going to get chance going. We are going to do that. Now we want to sit here and just give a call to action to all of you guys. This may be the last chance you ever have as Mariners fans to give your voice, to show your voice. Hang on. To show Shohei Otani. I, I'm really trying to nail this speech here. Can you tell? I don't want to stumble <laughs> yeah. over my words. Okay. This may be your last chance to try and sway Shohei Otani to Seattle. And this is going to be your last chance as fans to let your voice be heard. So let me say this loud and clear. If you are a Mariners fan who even point zero 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 one percent wants Shohei Otani in Seattle, get out to the ballpark this upcoming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, get to all three games. And for every single at bat that he is up at the plate, you better be screaming and chanting, come to Seattle, come to Seattle, come to Seattle. I can promise you I'm going to be at all three games doing it. I can promise you I'm going to be giving out a bunch of index cards to people doing it. And I can promise you I'm going to do everything in my part to make this happen. Because you do not get a chance every other year to get the greatest player to ever play this game on your ball club. You don't get a chance like this basically ever. They had one one six years ago. They fell short. And this may be their final chance ever. Because if Otani signs some 10 plus year deal, he's not ever coming to Seattle. So let the voices be heard, Mariners fans, why it should be here and why this city, this team, this fan base is where he should spend the rest of his career. So get out to the ballpark this week and let them hear it. Not for one at bat, not for two at bats, not for three at bats. I'm doing the LeBron here. Every single at bat, get loud and let them hear it. Let's go. Let's go, Shohei. So where are you going to be? Where are you planning to be? I know you said you were going to be roaming. What, which areas are you going to be roaming? I'm going to try to hit a lot of spots. Now, when we do these fan interviews, usually I go out to the pen because that's the age demographic and type of people that usually are happy to be on social media. So I'll spend some time out there passing out the index cards, but I'm going to try to make my rounds. I want to make it all around the 100 level concourse. I'll get up to the 300 level concourse. Anybody who will take these index cards, I'm handing them out and spoiler, we haven't made them and printed them out yet. We are going to, but it's going to be along the lines of you better be chanting, come to Seattle for Shohei Otani every at bat this series. So I'm trying to spread the word as much as we can. Anybody who will take one of these index cards, I'm handing them out. And if you want one, you can't find Lyle. You want to talk to Lyle, DM us, please. We try and respond to all of our DMs. DMs are open. Please feel free. Slide in as the kids say. Yes, absolutely feel free to send us as many DMs as you want about these games this upcoming week because we are trying to promote it as much as we can. Again, let the voices be heard. If you're chanting for Shohei every at bat to come to Seattle, you think that's not going to make headlines across the baseball world? You think that's not going to be on MLB Network? You think all these baseball accounts aren't going to be tweeting it out? They will be. And there's already a reputation for how loud and, and upbeat Seattle fans are. You do something like this this week, Otani said he heard the chance once. You think he won't hear him 10 to 12 times? Oh, he will. Yes, he will. And I got to give a shout out here because remember when these chants started back during All-Star Week? We DM'd the guy that actually started the chant, Zach Anders. And he said, we, talk, we told the story a few weeks back. He actually lives overseas and he was just back for All-Star Week. So he's not going to be in town during this series. And we kind of DM'd him and said, well, we'll carry it on here for you. We'll We'll even pick it up a notch if we want. Let's get it going all the at-bats. And he was like, hell yeah, like get it going. Keep this thing going. Do everything we can. So I do want to give a little hat tip to Zach, to Zach Anders, and say, we're going to keep this going. And we're going to do everything we can. So I'm fired up about this week in case you can't tell. I've been waiting years for this. And if you want to buy in even more, our friends at Simply Seattle, use code MARINE15 for 15% off your order. Have a really nice come to Seattle Shohei shirt that you can buy if you want one. So that'll, that'll buy into all the, all the excitement and hype. Yes, it will. Man, I can't wait. I, I want Shohei to hear it. Whether he signs here or not, and whether these chants even have 0.0001% of a decision factor into where he goes next year, it may, it may not. But at least give yourself the chance to sway him. Because if you don't, then, then there's no impact anyway. At least give yourself the chance to let yourselves be heard.
I like it. I like it, dog. Great speech. What what grade should I give you? Should I give you? Uh, I'll give you an A plus. Something you never got in science. How about that? <laughs> I hope so. I worked hard on this. I put effort into it. Again, in case you can't tell, this is actually important. <laughs> okay. Let's get to our Mariners storylines. Up first in our first storyline here, a couple of awards have been awarded to the Mariners this month. Not only did they set a franchise record for wins in a month, but huge shocker, Julio Rodriguez won American League Player of the Month. Maybe a little bit more surprising to the effect of us, Andres Munoz won American League Reliever of the Month. How about that? Do you want to start with Julio or Munoz? You you take your Let's pick. Let's just knock Julio out. Yeah, he's the obvious one. Okay, Julio Rodriguez for the month slashed 429, so 429 average, 474 on base, 724 slug. That's an 1197 OPS, 231 WRC+. Plus. So 131% above league average for the month with seven homers. And by the way, simple stat, but it stands out. 45 hits for the month. 45. We've detailed it all month long, but what an unbelievable month. So, like, look at all these stats he led the American League in this month. He led in batting average, on-base percentage, slugging, doubles, RBIs, steals, and F4. I think that usually ends up winning you an award. The two and a half wins above replacement is actually pretty bonkers, to be honest. <laughs> that might be the most, the craziest thing of all. Obviously takes into account his defense as well. But it has turned it from a disappointing Julio Rodriguez season where we're at the beginning of the month. We're just throwing out, man, these are pretty good stats for a down season to now where it's like, oh, well, his numbers are actually kind of better than they were last year. And, oh, by the way, with his home run today, he becomes the first player in Major League Baseball history to have a 25-25 season. That's 25 homers, 25 steals in each of his first two full Major League seasons. That's quite an accomplishment for someone who's only 22 years old. How high can his ceiling go? I'm not crazy to say at some point in his career he could have some 9 or 10 war seasons, right? No, you're not crazy. I think the thing that really pushed him over the top for this award, though, was his idea for the Run, run DMC tracksuits going to New York. Oh. Now, of course, the vibes didn't translate onto the field, but they I got to say they looked pretty slick. They looked pretty sick in the, club, in the clubhouse and Wednesday after the game. They were awesome, and I can't get over Scott Service's look while wearing them. That, that was what put it over the top. Or that he got Rev Run to, to send a video to Julio. Okay, what's the better Scott Service look? Him in the Run DMC outfit or him with the Edwin Diaz haircut in 2018 after Eddie saved the 50 games? I think it's in the, the with the jumpsuit. Okay, so we're staying with the current like, times. Like you know a, what, I agree. You're telling me a, a Midwest white man is supposed to, like, fit that, fit that, like, that, like, outfit? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was that was great. I mean, I love that Scott's always into this stuff. He's always we hear that he's a player's coach all the time and you hear you see why players love him because he buys into fun stuff like this. So it's it's fun and 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 hat tip to Julio for orchestrating this whole thing because maybe his second greatest accomplishment was winning player of the month with the top being getting the whole team to dress like Run DMC and buying the whole club outfits. I got to agree. Okay, let's get to Munoz now, because I think this is a bit more of a talking point. Julio's was uh, was obvious. We thought he was going to win American League Player of the Month. Going to be honest, Lyle did not think Andres Munoz was going to win American League Reliever of the Month. And then, But we sit here today and look that he led the American League in saves during the month of August. He was tied for the lead in F-War in August. He had a 1.59 ERA, 20 strikeouts, and 7 walks. So overall, like a, a really good month for Andres Munoz, but I sure as hell didn't think so during the month. I didn't think he was going to win the award either, but then once he won it and I actually looked, oh, what have his numbers been in the month of August? And you say, oh yeah, he had a good month. It just doesn't always feel that way because he got himself into some sticky situations late in ball games. There were a couple times where he coughed up a lead or two, even though he only gave up one run in those situations where... Look, relievers give up runs, even the best ones like Munoz. But all in all, he had a really good month. Do I think this was the best month Andres Munoz has ever had? No. Do I, do I think he had a good month? I do. 
think it's his fifth best month as a Mariner. That's what I, I, I went and I looked because I was like, no, I, I could swear, like, even though this is his first American League reliever of the month award, I know he's had better months than this. Um, let's like, let's get some context. First of all, this month actually is the highest on base percentage he's allowed in a full month this season. Fun fact, 312. That's the highest in any full month he's had this season, which kind of checks out as we saw, right? Because he, he allowed a lot of base runners. Second of all, to compare to some of the other great months he's had as a Mariner, his whip this month, base so base runners per inning was 1.3. His whip in June, July, August, September of last year was 075, 0417, 0973, and 0583. Significantly better than what he put up this month. And those four months, I would all stack up above the current month that he had this year, even if he allowed one or two more earned runs those months. I thought it, he was just, we've said on this podcast, he was better reliever last year. Flat out, he was. So you talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but a part of the reason he probably won the award is because he racked up saves. He wasn't racking up saves last year. He wasn't racking up as many early on this year because they had Paul Seawald. But now that he is actually closing games, I think that affects voters a little bit more. Yeah, it does. You know, you know they love saves. Even though saves are just like, it's situational instead of who's actually been the best reliever. So I think Andres Munoz should turn around and thank Paul Seawald for this award as well. Because if Paul Seawald didn't get traded, then Andres Munoz, if he puts up the same stat line, does not win this award. But he still did win it. And again, he still had a good month. And oh, by the way, he did all this basically without having his slider. So if this is a quote-unquote down month in the eyes of Mariner fans for Andres Munoz, then let's see what he does in a good month. Because I think there's a real world he could turn around in September and have a really sharp month, especially if he gets that slider back. The question is, does he get the slider back? Because it's been a little hit or miss this year. Yeah, we'll have to see. I I don't want to make it sound like we're trashing on Andres. I just thought there were some situations he could have been better in in the month of August. But then after all of this, he Mariners go 21 and 6 in the month of August and Andres Munoz saves 9 games, has a great month overall. So, in the end, I think we're just kind of cherry picking at this point. Yeah. And we've talked about it on the pod too. Andres Munoz, I mean, just as a human being is amazing you will not find many big leaguers nicer than that dude so i'm always rooting for him i'm rooting for him now i'm i think i've said some nice things about him because he's won this award by voters he was the best reliever in the american league this month and he's got the crown to show it yeah so good job andres congratulations and i think it these two awards are the perfect capper on what was the best month in mariners baseball history player of the month reliever of the month I would say, well, they were the probably the American League Team of the Month, maybe not the Major League Baseball Team of the Month. That somehow still will go to the Dodgers, who somehow won multiple more games than the Mariners did in that month. That's a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good month for the Dodgers, and even more indication for you to go to Chasing Aces Golf and and bid for those tickets for for the sixteenth because it's gonna it's high quality baseball. Now a word from our friends at BetterHelp. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Regardless, if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're a human who lives in a world and is going through a very hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in our description. It's betterhelp.com slash Pod. That's better H-E-L-P.com slash Marine Layer Pod. Clicking that link helps support this podcast, but also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Because the, finding a therapist is a little bit like dating. If you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing in therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist 
at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in our description or visit betterhelp.com slash marine layer pod. Second storyline here. George Kirby's got some splits that make absolutely no sense. So check this out. Going into his start on Sunday, these were his numbers against teams with a winning record. He had a 181 ERA, 086 whip, and was striking out just over nine and a half batters per nine. Really good. Against teams with a losing record this year, 481 ERA, 120 whip, and just over six and a half strikeouts per nine, with just about equal innings thrown on each side of this coin. What in the world is going on with that? I have some theories. First theory, which is more funny, does he just get bored? Well, I would hope not, because you still need to win those games against the bad teams. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's like, that's my joking theory. I have a real theory, though, because if you take a look at this, there's no real correlation between the bad teams he's facing. It's like, okay, so say all the bad teams he fa- he's facing are like at least very elite contact oriented teams who don't strike out a bunch, don't walk a lot and hit balls in the strike zone really well. Well, that's not really the case. I mean, you can make that the case. The Royals, the Royals do still do though strike out a very decent amount. They're in the bottom ten of, or sorry, in the bottom fifteen of strikeouts. But the other two teams that you know, the notable blow up appearances he's had. I mean, he struggled against the Tigers this year. He struggled against the Pirates at home on a Friday night. Those are all in the bottom fifteen percentage and strikeout rate. So those aren't exactly like contact oriented teams. It's not like running into hot offensive teams like the. Pirates, Royals, Tigers are all in the bottom 10 in like isolated power, like in terms of like a power surge, like fluky home runs. That's not the case. And it's not the the case of, again, like running into good offensive teams. All the these teams that he struggled against, uh, like a struggling outing against the Royals, against the Tigers, against the Pirates, those are all bottom five offenses by WRC+. And yet they had a lot of success against a guy people are going to give Cy Young votes to this year. Now, why is that? So I have a theory. And that it's that this is the case of George Kirby throwing too many strikes in this case. Does that sound crazy? I don't know if it sounds crazy. Keep going. Keep, try and sales pitch me on this. So if you think about this. So George Kirby's greatest asset is that he throws a lot of strikes. But what helps a struggling offense more than anything? It's getting pitches to hit. And the best pitches to hit are always in the strike zone. George Kirby throws more pitches in the strike zone than most pitchers in baseball. And as we know, he's not really a strikeout artist, for example. He'll have outings where he's going to get some punch outs. But overall, his whiff percentage is in the 26th percentile. His strikeout rate is right in the middle of baseball at the 46th percentile. That's why location is so important to him. But if he's just throwing a bunch of strikes and not getting a lot of whiffs, like sometimes can happen with his stuff, that might help worse teams hit him. So the Pirates the Royals and the Tigers who are not good offensive teams suddenly get a pitcher who's just going to fill up the strike zone. And eventually some of their swings are going to connect because those are the best pitches to hit. And he likes throwing fastballs and fastballs in the zone are usually the best pitches to hit no matter who throws them. My only counter to this, my only counter to this is why then does he still thrive against better offenses in baseball when he still isn't generating swing and miss? Because there's a difference between filling up the strike zone and throwing quality strikes in the strike zone. You can throw a bunch of pitches on the edge and throw quality strikes, or you can throw a bunch of pitches that catch a lot of plate and get hit really well, which is why I think that. And if you think it's like, okay, well, he's a guy who has four pitches, throws up to 98 and has the best command in baseball, you could argue. Right. That's why he succeeds against good teams, which is, I think, a little bit easier to sales pitch than what I originally pitched you of why he's struggling. An example I have for you on why quality strikes matter so much. 817 against the Royals. That was the start in Kansas City. He threw 72.9% of his pitches in the strike zone. Uh, Actually, sorry, that was 72.9% fastballs. 
75% for off-speed pitches. Those two marks that he threw were highest. That, that was a high mark of fastballs and off-speed pitches he's thrown in the strike zone in a game this season. And coincidentally, a more contact-oriented team, but still sort of bottom offense like the Kansas City Royals, tend to hit those pitches more because he did not get an in-zone whiff on his fastball that entire game. So threw a bunch of pitches in the strike zone, but they were not the most quality pitches, so they get hit a little bit more. So that's it. That was a bit of a long-winded answer, but it, in short, he sometimes throws too many strikes, and they're not quality strikes, and then gets hit. I think his whiff rate is just going to have to continue to build up as his time in the big leagues goes on. Because if there's any room for improvement for George Kirby, even though he's already so talented and phenomenal as it is, he could miss some more bats. And again, some of these more struggling offenses, it gives them more chances to hit like you're outlining here. Now, I still scratch my head at why the difference is this drastic. Why, for example, he'll go out and throw nine shutout innings against the Orioles by record the best team in the American League, but then he'll go out and struggle against the Royals, against the Pirates, against the Tigers. It, it's just a head scratcher. I, I understand what you're saying, and I do agree with some of it that maybe all of the strikes begin to add up, but it still is odd that against teams that are so much better – He's putting up an ERA of sub two. I don't know. It's just one of those weird things to me. Maybe it's one of those things you can't quantify and it doesn't make sense. It's just one of those things that happens. Maybe George Kirby's really trying to be like James Shields and earn a nickname like big game George, but then against all the other teams, it just doesn't matter to him. Maybe. And you look at the outing against the Astros, you look at the outing against the Orioles, you look at his numbers against some of the other high quality teams this year, and he just buzzsaws right through them. But then some of these other starts, it doesn't happen. I will say, to be fair, I, I have this pirate start outlined on, on our show prep, including which was his worst outing of the season by runs, where he gave up seven runs against the Pirates in four and, a two, in four and two-thirds innings pitched. If you remember that game, I'm still almost positive the balls were juiced that night because balls were flying out of the park left and right in Seattle that day. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll be interested to see how this fares even next year moving forward if this continues but the good news for Kirby and if you happen to believe in these splits is he's not going to have many more starts against bad teams he's going to be facing quality teams the rest of the way so maybe that's good news for him so maybe Curry or Kirby when he saw that he was going to get a matchup against the A's last week on a night that you earned yourself a lifetime ban from attending Monday through Thursday T-Mobile Park baseball games was that he realized, well, I might get blown up against these guys, so I'm actually going to try and face a better opponent on the weekend, which didn't work again. <laughs> it actually kind of went against against his splits a little bit more when he uh, when he only threw three innings on on Sunday. So I don't know. Maybe maybe he thought about it. Well, then maybe I shouldn't be banned from the park if he purposely tried to sit out of that game. Then it's not my fault. That was a self made decision. Well, last I checked, George wasn't the only person who got scratched that night. Oh, that part is fair. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. TBD. Yeah, okay. Tell, you keep telling yourself that. Before we get to our interview with Ty P, we want to talk to you about a brand new sponsor of ours and one we're really excited about. It's Pagacha's Pub 85 in Kirkland. It is the home of the best pizza in town located in Rose Hill in Kirkland on 85th Street. It has Spirit Sports fire provisions, custom-built pizza oven. It's still your neighborhood watering hole, but what's Pagacha, you might ask? Come and find out at Pagacha's Pub 85. It's not fancy. It's not trendy. It's just good. It's made to order, made from scratch. You can also watch all the sports you desire at Pub 85. It's got 22 TVs along with 20 taps. So you want to go watch the Mariners games? Head over to Pub 85 and watch some Mariners games. Fresh food, fresh cocktails, fresh beer, and a fresh coat of paint, fun and friendly. You want sports, they've got them. And it's not just beer, guys. They have beer, they have whiskey, tequila, 20 drafts. And again, that's always fresh at Pub 85 in Kirkland. Go check it out. I think that's going to be a good place to watch a division race. We might have to I think go so. help, hop over and visit. Yeah, when I come back up, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have to go. We'll uh, host a little Marine Lair Pod meet and greet. I think that yeah, sounds, sounds good. Great. That yeah, sounds, sounds awesome. good. Well, I'm like, 
I'm so excited that we got this interview with Ty Pete. I'm I'm very happy about not only getting it, but then talking to him. The expectations I had for this interview got blown out of the water within the first five minutes. Ty, he's barely 18 years old, but he gave us so much detail, so much personality, so much appreciation for baseball and other things that I like when we're done, we're like, that was amazing. And we really appreciate Ty for taking some time to come on with us and talk a little bit about his baseball career and his life, which, you know, he gets some opportunity to do that since he's a first round pick, but now he's a minor league baseball player. He's got to grind and, and he made some time for us. He's our guy now. That's fair to say, right? Like Ty Pete's yeah, our he guy. He is our guy. He is our guy. Our number he is our number one prospect in the Mariners organization. Correct. And Again, since we haven't had that many players on yet, and he is not only one of the first players that we've had on this show, but certainly the most high-profile player we've had on this show, you'll see us hyping him up going forward. I mean, when he goes off down in Modesto or wherever he's at starting next year, oh, we'll be retweeting his highlights and quote tweeting and and just hype, just gassing him up every chance we get. Because like I said, he was seriously awesome. I hope you guys enjoy this conversation. I know we certainly did in the time we got to talk to him. And by the way, stay tuned for this. Ty Pete has a YouTube channel. So if you're a, Mar- a Mariners fan or just a baseball fan out there that enjoys player content on YouTube, go follow Ty Pete. We'll plug his channel in the show description and on YouTube, by the way, too. So you guys can go check it out. He's only done a couple videos so far, but he talked about he's going to plan to do a lot more and he gets into what he wants that to look like. So really, we went a million different ways in this conversation, but. And one more quick note, we did this interview with Ty the day after he had the two Grand Slam game down in Modesto. So just for time's sake and for your guys' reference, that's when we recorded it. Let's not hold you up any longer because he was so much fun to have on. Let's get to our interview now with Mariners' first-round pick, Ty Pete. All right, we've got Ty Pete on with us. Mariners' 2023 first-round pick, now of the Modesto Nuts. Tough day at the plate yesterday, Ty. I mean, what, you can't do any better? <laughs> no, nah, yesterday was pretty cool. Um, it was definitely an experience, um, but I was seeing it well. Um, so you see it well, you, all you got to do is see ball, hit ball. I think I read it somewhere. Was that your, your first career two-homer game? Yeah, that, I thought about it more. And, like, when I was, like, six, I had, like, you know, like five in one tournament. But I think it was, like, one each like, game. So that was like my first two run home run. And I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, I've never hit two home runs in a game. And actually before I was talking to Jared Suntrum, I was like, dude, like I've never home run like off of like a lefty curveball. Like I don't think I ever have. And he was like, for real? And I was like, yeah. And then <laughs> like an hour later. <laughs> I, okay. I know you made sure to look at that second one too. Do you think your bat flip was good enough? I didn't, I didn't think it was gone as soon as I hit it. But I think like, uh, I like, I don't know, maybe like a second after I made contact, I was like, oh, like that's gone. Like that's, that's got a chance. But it was more of like a reaction thing. Also, like I started opening it up a little bit too early. So that's why I kind of came out of the box a little open. But the first one I knew was gone. First one you, I knew you, was gone. You did do a bit of like a Sammy Sosa hop though. Yeah, a little, little Sammy Sosa. I've been, I've been watching, uh, I've been watching some, uh, some highlights lately. I, I know what to do. There, so like on high schoolers, there's obviously not as much television i would say quality video on some of your home runs and don't get to look at you as much like what is your your go-to when you're admiring a home run uh i'm more of usually i usually i pull my home run so uh i'm more of a a pull it back at the stance grab the barrel put the barrel aside that's where but i, I like to talk to the dugout as soon as i hit it so um and I, in high school my dugout was right next to the next to the plate um, so after I hit when I knew it was gone, I would, I would go to them, you know, hype, hype them up and get our, get our team, get some energy going. How many did you hit in high school? I think I had 12. I think it was 11. I think it was 12. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good number. Yeah. I, I know you're a guy that talks about, you want baseball to be fun. You want to help make the game fun for you. How do you feel like you can do that as you kind of start your pro career here? Right. Um, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm all, I'm all about fun, um, excitement. I, I mean, playing, playing baseball is kind of like, it's my job now. So, um, being able to be able to do what I love, um, have some joy behind it, have some excitement 
Um, I really do enjoy playing it. Uh, and I think passing that down, showing the fans, showing these kids um, that, you know, you can have fun while playing. It's not, it's not all business. And um, it's getting, it's starting to spread more, especially with, uh, with these fans. Like I've never played in front of a uh, big fans other than little league world series. Um, but I think now that I'm starting to play in front of fans, I'm starting to play in front of young, young kids. I remember, I remember when I was young and I was watching these guys play, um, I would watch everything they do. Uh, so having kids doing the same thing for me, watching me play, I want to show them like kind of a good example and just show like, Hey, you can have fun and play sports while, um, while like still doing your job and still getting things done. Did you have a lot of leeway in high school to do some more fun things? I know high school baseball is two former high school baseball players ourselves, it can be a, it'd be a little stricter on that sense. Were you guys allowed to, to be a little bit more expressive in high school? Um, I think it just kind of depends on what, like, I guess depends on your coach and um, depends on really a, a lot of things, your organization you play in. But uh, I'd say high school, my high school coach was chill. Um, he liked having all, all the energy and he liked us being kind of loose, playing, having, playing, uh, like playing with passion instead of um, kind of cutthroat stuff. But, you know, my, my high school coach kind of just let me play and um, kind of let the whole team uh, build off of that and build off of uh, the emotions we had. But we we were a close team, so we we were all very, like, very good friends. Our relationship, our um, connections were really well, good chemistry. So overall, Ty, you're now about a month and a half into being a pro. How How is it settling in? Yeah, um, I, it's, set, it's settling in pretty well just as a young kid. I'm also, like... Like a couple of weeks into being 18, but uh, being like being a young kid out here, kind of by myself, that's nothing, nothing I've been worried about. I've, I've enjoyed uh, living by myself. I uh, enjoy, you know, being with my friends, kind of having the the freedom at the same time. Um, being having a job out here, it's, it's different. Um, but I mean, my job is baseball, so I, I love doing it. And going going to the facility every day, it's almost like it's almost like nothing's changed except um. I'm just getting a little more perks than I had before. Okay, we wanted to talk a little bit of baseball with you, and then we've got some fun stuff on the back half of this. But just as yeah. you went through some of the draft process and as you were working your way through getting up to the draft, when you went through some of these meetings, especially with the Mariners, what did you take away after sitting down with those guys? Yeah, the Mariners. So I, I had little uh, little notes for myself just um, afterwards, writing down all like, kind of what happened, who was there. Um, how the conversation go, and uh, overall, the Mariners, the Mariners were my my favorite team. Especially, yeah, I just felt like I was a part of a, a bigger family, um, and it it really it really uh, proved itself afterwards. I got after the draft, I have all these players and uh, staff members, coaches reaching out to me, congratulating me, um, wishing they'd see me soon, um, excited to play with me, and I just think that's like the most important part is establishing these establishing these connections with all these people. Um, it, it was cool just, you know, as a young kid, you see, you watch these guys on TV and then realize, you know, they're, they're texting you congratulations. And it's, uh, it was unbelievable. It was just a, a moment, I, a moment that really set, set pretty well in my heart, just knowing like, you know, I'm welcomed here. And, um, it was just, we, we like clicked, uh, me, Scott, <laughs> Scott's my boy. We, we talked about, uh, just my plate appearances, um, talked about my approach my defense approach how like how I want to change things and I just think that's I think it was I think it was great so I wrote them down as a 10 out of 10 and you get to take the the annual trip to T-Mobile Park as all the first round picks get to you get to take batting practice you get to suit up you get to meet all the players what was your favorite part mm -hmm. of that uh my my favorite part is always talking to the fans um you know I, it's it was cool hitting BP there it was cool Ten ground balls, but it was cool doing all this stuff. But um, I think it was more cool just kind of meeting all the fans, um, signing autographs, taking pictures. Uh, afterwards, after the game, we were waiting for our Uber and just all the people coming up to me, um, knowing who I was, asking for pictures and autographs. I love that. And um, I love giving back to them. I love talking to them, telling them how this process goes. Because um, when, I, when I was a kid, I, I like to go back to that. Because when I was a kid, I was watching these guys and wondering how to get there and wondering what it's like. Um, that's why, that's why I've been making videos. I've been kind of documenting my whole, my whole process just so, so people can understand like what's happening and how, how it works. Okay. You're talking about making videos. I want to put a pin in that, but one more question I had before that is 
Who'd you get to meet when you were there in Seattle, at least players wise? Yeah. Um, I basically met the whole team. Um, first person I met was, I think it was JP Crawford. Uh, I met Kyle Riley, Ty France, Jared Kelnick. And then I think walking back to the locker room is when I met Julio Rodriguez. He was kind of just like walking, like, um, he's kind of just walking in the hallway. And I was like, yo. And he was like, <laughs> he like put his hand out. He's like, I'm Julio. That's all he said. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. And then he was like, come, come with me. So then I like, I went with him. We went to batting cages. Um, then went back to the training room. And then eventually I met kind of the rest of the players, Tay Oscar Hernandez. But um, I think the coolest one kind of, I sat down and talked to Colton Wong. Um, and I sat down for, I was like, hey, it was like 30 minutes. We kind of just like, I talked to him about, through a lot of things, through the process, through um, like what it was like getting traded, um, what is like kind of getting to the process that moment. So um, that was really cool. Just kind of getting a big, bigger understanding of what happens, but meeting all those guys, the pitchers too, I met Logan Gilbert. He, he texted me, which is, um, that was, that was pretty cool. So just uh, that whole team, like it felt like I, I played there already. <laughs> so you can experience it firsthand now. I mean, just as two people who have done some stuff in the media, we see it from afar, but you've kind of gotten to see it as a player. Not only are these guys playing really well right now, but it seems like it's a really, really easy group of guys to root for too, which is why I feel like a lot of people are attached to them and connected to them. Yeah, 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 no, they're playing like stupid good. Like we have we have TVs on um uh in our locker room. We see them playing, and obviously I get all the the um, notifications on you know they win another game or they sweeped another team. So that's it's, it's cool just seeing like um all of us kind of uh coming together and we're all winning games um at every affiliate. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I did want to circle back to you making videos because you're one of very few baseball players that has started a YouTube channel is doing content. And for whatever it's worth, I think way more players should be doing that because I'll tell you what, fans eat that stuff up. You look at the handful of baseball players that are doing that stuff, fans absolutely love it, seeing all the behind the scenes stuff, seeing what you're yeah. doing in your in your daily basis. But how did you start to think to yourself, oh, this is something I want to do and pursue because you started it back in high school. Yeah, so that's like that's things. Um, this is the thing that kind of no one really knows about me, but like I'm a technology freak. Like, um, as as a kid, I always I always made videos. Uh, I'm sure there's videos out there under like some random name that I made up. Like, tons of videos. Me, me, and one of my best friends when I was a kid, we would make uh, a lot of YouTube videos, and then we would. I love editing, so I would edit them and post them. Like it would get like a view maybe I wouldn't have like a name under it, but I just like doing all that stuff and playing, um, it all, it all sorts out from playing video games. I play a lot. Um, and I was thinking like, Hey, maybe I should start, uh, start playing video games on camera. And then, um, you know, these guys can ask me questions behind the scenes, but then I was like, you know what? I might as well make a couple of videos showing like showing like, so they can visually see what's happening instead of me just kind of telling them how it goes. Um, but I really need to keep it going. Like, I stopped doing it for a while because I was like, like, there's nothing really to to record up here. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the same repetitive thing every day. Um, but and I've already made like two day in the life, which I, which I think were pretty cool. Like, it's kind of like it was easy. It was so easy on my part because it was just I had to record what I was doing that day. Um, but I found it like everyone loved it. Um, so I was like, man, maybe I should make another one. So I might I might vlog like another day where. Uh, in the off season where I'm like kind of I'm getting my car and I'm going to hit and it's all that all that type of stuff but um it's been it's been pretty fun I've just always been a technology nerd um but it's it's always been in me are you bigger are you fan of, of longer YouTube vlogs or do you like the short ones you get on TikTok as well like 60 seconds because I was gonna say if you want to do something every day there are a lot of very popular channels on TikTok, on Instagram, where people literally yeah. just document their day, even if they're doing the same thing every day. I mean, people eat that stuff up. There's nothing that a little bit of music and good editing can't fix. So, right, right. I need to work on that. I don't. I honestly don't even know how to compress all I do in a day in like sixty seconds. So, and once I get that figured out, it's done. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> so you're entirely self-taught. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I literally just get um. I just get my computer, open up and open up like an editing software i'm like all right hey what what do i do was there one one youtube channel one influencer one something that was your inspiration behind this and he's like oh that's that's pretty cool um 
I think it's like I guess it's not just one. Um, not really. I I I watch a ton of YouTube, but like nothing behind like no like similar baseball YouTubers that like do stuff or kind of sports related stuff. Um, I guess kind of like the day in the life I watch. I watch a couple by Dockery. Uh, he's like a football player. Um, but YouTube mostly I just watch like golf and uh and I watch your friend Kyle. He's a video game guy. But other than that, like I don't really watch. I don't really watch like kind of inspirational stuff. There's two things I took away from watching your YouTube videos. One, sounds like you're a J. Cole fan because you wake up in one of them and you said, uh, what, first things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. And then you get in the shower Duh. and you got, no, you got no role models playing. So I was like, oh, this guy's a J. Cole fan, isn't he? Dog, I am like the biggest J. Cole fan. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, he's he's the GOAT. I mean, I'll argue that with anybody, but it's, it's crazy because I didn't realize how big of a fan I was until like, one of my friends was like, dude, I'm playing J. Cole song. I was like, all right. It was like first second of any song, like any album, any song. Um, I know it like word for word, every song, but it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm a huge J. Cole fan. My mom, my mom for my 12th birthday, or was it my 12th? No, I think it was my 15th, my 15th birthday. She got me tickets to a concert, to his um, off season concert. And that was my first concert I've been to. And yeah, I'm a huge J. Cole fan though. So that's cool your top you artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one. I, well, of all t- of all time, my top artist of all time is probably Michael Jackson. Um, okay. I'm a I'm a big R and B guy. I'm not really more of like the rap. Um, mm-hmm. but it's it's funny I say that because I I know a lot of rap songs. But I'm, I'm a, by myself listening. I probably just listen to R and B. Um, Usher, Michael Jackson, uh, those guys. Those are my like. Those are my top two. But J Cole, <laughs> J Cole is number one. Yeah. <laughs> And you come from a state with a loaded, I mean, loaded list of artists. Tons, tons of them. Tons of artists. Like, I know, I know a bunch of, I know a bunch of songs. I think I know, like, <laughs> if a song is even graced to like top a thousand, I'd probably know it. The other thing I took away from watching your YouTube videos was what made you get rid of the blonde hair? Yeah, I want to go back to my natural hair. I actually, I looked back, I saw a picture the other day, and I was like, God why (laughs) like i i never should have changed and if i didn't because i had to um i had to like pick it out and start all over again because like when you have to because i had to dye it back black from my natural hair color because i had to get Mm -hmm. the bleach out and it like killed my hair um but i i should have never went blonde i regret that (laughs) i have one more well i actually might have more than one but related to your youtube like where do you find all the time to edit all this stuff. I mean, you're training to be a first round pick in the major league baseball draft. You have school. I'm sure you have travel ball to do. Mm-hmm. When do you find time to actually sit down and edit some of this stuff together? Yeah. Um, I get it done. Like I get it done fast. And, uh, I edited that last video. I think I, I'm pretty sure I did it on my phone. Um, that first one I made was not, that was not my, like, like I didn't like that video. I just like, I just got it out and I was like, oh, it's not too bad. But the second one I really tried, um, and I think I was at the combine. I actually edited it when I was at the combine. Um, and I got it done in like two hours, maybe three hours. And I kind of just did it in my bed. We we had like, I had like two meetings that day. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start editing now. And then planes, the plane, I got it done. Um, but usually we have a lot of downtime. Like right now, today's my day off. I just got back from golfing. Um, and then... Yeah, so today's my day off. Usually we don't have much downtime like normal now, like normal days of the week. Not anymore, but I just kind of come home, play play the show, and go to bed. <laughs> Second off, think of this. Have you seen like the Julio Rodriguez digital show the Mariners put on when he was a prospect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I started – I was going to start watching those because my, my manager was like, hey, you know Julio Rodriguez makes videos too, right? And I was like, oh. So then I like started looking at him. I was like, oh. Guy really does make it, so I might start getting a bunch of inspiration off of that. But he actually he actually DM'd me yesterday, um, about about my performance yesterday. That was pretty cool. Nice. Well, you yeah. should you should pitch the Mariners that you want to do that. If you if you actually want to, not even just you making videos, but putting your face on the big leagues account to to do prospect videos because people loved that. You right. talking to other guys that you're down there in the system with? I mean. That's a, a rare door open to guys they don't get normally get to hear about. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing that because I looked at I actually looked at uh 
YouTube yesterday and I was like, oh my God, people are subscribing. Like, I, I had no idea. I was like, oh, maybe I should actually start doing this. I thought about that. I was like, I should start recording stuff. I just, ideas don't come to my head that often. Like, ideas will and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to start going through with them. Uh, it'd be pretty cool though. I'm going to guess whatever ideas you have, they're probably good ideas. Or at least, we'll put it like this, they're not bad ideas because anything you're doing especially as a player, like people always want to see it. So I'm sure any ideas you have would be cool. But so when you started editing videos, this was my last YouTube question I had for you. How old were you? Because I, one of the things I saw from watching your videos was, oh, I'm, you were like, I'm going to edit this where some people like hire somebody to edit their videos and you're doing it all on your own. So you must've learned from somewhat of a young age. Yeah. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to edit my own videos for like however long I make videos just cause I like doing it. Yeah. Um, I like kind of like doing my own thing, but I started editing videos when I was, I think, nine, nine or ten. Um, my mom got me this laptop, uh, and I I used that laptop until I used that laptop until like it burnt. Like I used that so much, and I just continued to edit videos, continued to make videos. I, I had different apps I would use, um, but I, it's been like such a young age. Yeah, so just like at a young age, um, I've always been a huge computer guy. I would sit in my room, I would edit these videos, I'd show my mom, uh, my mom would love it. And so I think that's kind of where I got my, my love for it. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. I, I love editing videos. You know, if people send me videos, I'll edit them for them. <laughs> I mean, power to you, because I'll tell you what, it took us a long time to learn. Like, I remember the first time I opened up Premiere Pro, which I guess was back when we were in college. I looked at it and mm -hmm. it was like, this thing looks like driving, like flying a rocket ship. Like, how does yeah. somebody do this? No, nah, sometimes I'm like, what did that, like, what did I just do? Or like... I would have one time, I clearly remember one time I wanted to just quit. I had like finished this whole video. Um, and then I, I think I accidentally pressed like shift and I clicked on it and it, it, it had all of them and I backspaced it and I was like, oh, no. And then my computer died. And after that, like I, I'll never, I didn't even touch that project. I think I just threw it away. <laughs> I, was, I, guess I was so mad. I guess that's welcome to editing. I feel like everybody who's ever edited a video has some story like that. Right. Like, I, don't even, I don't even think that was possible. I don't even know how I, like, I clicked on all of them at the same time. But and my, as soon as my computer died, I just like looked at my like computer. I was just like, dude, dog, <laughs> <laughs> dog. I know you said you – I know you said once you got into minor league ball and, and once you got your pro career started, you said you like spending time with a bunch of your friends. I know we were sitting here talking about it. Maybe you can do some content with – some of your friends you're pretty close with johnny farmello aren't you because you guys were in the same class same year i mean it seems like I, i've got a couple follow-ups to this but it seems like you guys are pretty good friends yeah no <laughs> we're like we're like boys um he was my roommate team usa that's when we first met and then um from then we stayed with each other for like two weeks um we kept in touch and then draft night um I so like this guy on Twitter like leaked all of them like five minutes before. His name is Joe mm -hmm. Doyle. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Friend, friend of the so podcast, the Joe Doyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like leaked like all of them. Um, and so I got we both me and my dad both got notifications on our watch, uh, and it said pick twenty nine, Johnny Farmella. We went crazy because at that <laughs> point we already knew, like I already knew, um, I was going to the Mariners. Um, so we, I went nuts. And I was like, no way. Like the, my room. And again, I immediately texted him. He was like, dog, no way. Cause he didn't know I was going yet. Yeah. So it was like a complete total surprise. And then we saw each other. We went to go, uh, we got some dinner. Um, and then we stayed with each other for another like week and a half, two weeks. Um, and you know, hopefully he gets up here quick. He's right now he's in the, um, uh, bridge league. Uh, he was having some problems, but he's good now. So. He's going to be up here faster than, you know, faster than I'll, I'll think. I've got two follow-ups to this because I heard two yeah. pretty good stories about you and Johnny. So I wanted to ask you about them. One is, so Jerry DePoto was doing his podcast that he does. It's a couple weeks after the draft. And he was telling the stories of, of all you guys taking your trips to Seattle and hitting your rounds of BP on the field. And he was talking yeah. about Johnny hitting where he said Johnny had a really good round. He was spraying the ball everywhere, but he didn't hit any balls out. So Johnny turned around to him and said, hey, how long should I keep hitting? And they said, it's really whatever you want, Johnny. I mean, you're already a Mariner. You don't have to keep proving things to us. And he said, how many balls did Ty Pete hit out during his round? And <laughs> yeah, and, and DePoto says, oh, he hit two, and they were pretty tape measure shots. 
And Johnny turns around, he hits three in a row, turns back around to DePoto, drops the bat, and he's like, yeah, I'm done. See, like, they gave me a limit. They gave me a limit. And if I went <laughs> after him, I would have tripled it. Because I... <laughs> Because I was going like I was like you know what there's no there's no point like I'm not gonna unleash and then uh, I was like you know what these fans are here I only have like three more balls might as well just start ripping um, so then I just turned on home run derby mode and just start ripping balls I think I hit one off of the like you know the little jumbotron yeah um, so I hit one off there and I was like you know what that's that's good that's good and I didn't even think I was like oh Johnny's gonna definitely hit more than two <laughs> but if we go back if we go back I'm gonna be ripping balls. Every ball, every ball, I'm going to give him a little stare down as the ball's in the, in the air. But he told me, that's like the first thing he told me. He's like, he's like, you hit two? I was like, <laughs> I already saw the tweets, bro. <laughs> well, now you got two grand slams instead. Right, there he texted go. me yesterday. All he sent was like a laughing emoji. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, now, now it's confirmed here on the pod. Ty Pete says, you guys go through another round of BP together. You're tripling his home run total. I'm going to quadruple it. You can change that. Oh, there we go. So quadruple. You're getting you're getting twelve plus at least in the next round. I have I have to if I'm going against Johnny. <laughs> Here here's the other story we heard, and we thought, oh, what a perfect place then to give you a platform to respond because this is actually a couple months before you guys were drafted. So you yeah. mentioned Joe Doyle, and Johnny was on a podcast with Joe a couple months before the draft, and Joe asked him at the very end of the podcast. He goes, "Okay, Johnny, I've got to ask this one question." Who's the one guy in this draft class who's not dating your sister? And he thinks about it for a second and he goes, yeah, it's got to be Ty Pete. And his exact, (laughs) his exact words were, uh, I don't want Ty Pete driving up to the house in his Mercedes with all his chains and sunglasses on. So we hear that and we're like, well, let's give Ty a chance to respond here. Thank you. Thank you. And it doesn't help with what I'm about to say at all. Um, the car I'm actually looking at is a Mercedes and <laughs> it's the funniest thing because I didn't even think about it. Um, I didn't think I was talking to Johnny actually. Um, and I just got back from test driving it. So I get back to the apartment and I was like, yo, Johnny, like, look at this car. I showed him. He was like, dude, that's sick. Um, and then I was like, I was thinking about it. And my mom goes, you can't get a Mercedes. Johnny said you're going to roll up in a Mercedes. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and he started dying. We both started dying laughing. Because, like, that's the first thing we thought of. And I was like, I can't get this car. It's going to keep coming true. Like, I can't I can't get this. So then I was just like, dude. And um, it was it was just funny because, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up getting that car. Um, but it was, it was just hilarious. Like, the look on his face, he was just like, dude. <laughs> but so quick, I, he tur- said. Huh? Oh, what did you say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you no he. I was just like, bro, like me? And he was like, you were just the first person I thought of. And I was like, <laughs> and like, and then uh, someone said like, oh, it's like iconic or like, it's funny that they're teammates now. I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. So turnaround question to that, Ty, are you letting Johnny date your sister? Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, good baseball player. Uh, three home runs, you know, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, yeah, he he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's funny. Johnny is funny, dude. Like he's probably the one. He's underrated. Funny. We, me, Cole, Aiden, all of us say that. Like the guy is funny. Oh, was he a good roommate though? Yeah, yeah, he's a good roommate. Clean, just sleeps by himself. He all he all he does is sit sit in a little corner, scroll through his phone, fall asleep. That's what. That's, that was the that was the room. But we we did have this fan in our room, and he had like he had like a fan. It was like, I mean, it had a, it was like an industrial fan. Like, fan was big, and I was like, "Where do you even buy that?" <laughs> like, the fan was like maybe like this big, and it was just constant. Like, I was across the room, I could still feel it. Well, down in Florida, you probably needed it, right? Right. No, no, it's hot, dude. We were we were in Arizona this time. It was hot. Oh, it was hot. Yeah, so we were, we were in uh, Peoria. Oh. oh, okay. There you go. Well, yeah. it's still hot weather, one way or another. Well, at right. least it's a dry heat. Right. How'd you guys connect so well? I mean, back when you guys were playing Team USA together, because it sounds, I mean, you guys have had this friendship for a while now. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I think it's just kind of like we just came, we just became really good friends, and then we started seeing each other all the time, like, especially around baseball stuff. Like, at the combine, we saw each other, we hung out there. Um, and ever since then, like, we kind of just, like, became really good friends, um, and things worked out where we just keep playing with each other. Um, but 
you know, I'm, I'm super excited for him to get up here um, and be teammates again. One, one, two, three, four with me, Cole, Aiden, and Johnny, all, all four of us. So um, I love it. It's been, it's worked out really. Um, and then Colt, we've all, we're really good friends with Colt now too. He's, I, I think I've, I've hung out with Colt maybe like three or four times before, like here, uh, just kind of like workouts. But now like we're rooming right now and God, he's, he is funny. Colt's also funny and um, he's just like a good guy. But all, all three of us really are just like, we all like link really well. So all four of you guys were on Team USA. Uh, circuit, me, at least. me, Colt. And Johnny, I don't think Aiden did PDP, but me, Cole, that's, and Johnny were all three of us. Yeah, that's still got to be like pretty rare that three guys in the same circuit are all on the same team and probably at the same right. level. As long as you guys are all in the organization together, I mean, right. it's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that that is kind of weird to think about. Like three high schoolers and we all knew each other, so that's kind of cool. Okay, Ty. Before we wrap this up. We've got five rapid fire questions for you and they're supposed to be on the fun side, but to just try to give fans and and listeners just a chance to get to know even a little bit more about you. So the first one we have for you is what's your go-to pregame and post-game meal? Um, Pregame, do I love like Chipotle, like a Chipotle bowl, double chicken, queso. And then after they put the one scoop of queso, I ask for double queso. So they don't even see it coming. But it's extra queso. That right there, that's pregame. Postgame, whatever they got. Like, whatever they have in there, I'll eat it. I'm a big sushi okay. guy, though, too. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. I just ate a Poke Bowl. Good taste. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty good. You got to have yeah. some seafood when you get up to Seattle. I mean, dude, it's, oh, it's pretty I, good. I got to tell you, like, we had, so we had dinner. Um, we had dinner and lunch the same day. Um, and I, I looked at our, the area scout, Terry, and he was like, it's on the Mariners bill. And I was like, Oh, 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 I think I got two pounds of, uh, I think I got two pounds of Dungeness crab, a pound of snow crab. Uh, this is all in one setting, two pounds of Dungeness crab, pound of snow crab. I had two bowls of clam chowder. Um, <laughs> and I had a 14 ounce steak and I downed it all the entire thing. And then we had dinner that night. Wow. Where'd you guys eat? Dude, Where is that? Cut- I don't even, I think it was called Cutters. It might've been Cutters or, um, it was like, it was like this place across the street from Cutters. It's like another crab hmm. place. Downed it all. I had one whole half a table, like it was all my plates. Yeah, dude. You like seafood? I mean, once you get to the big leagues, you can, you can feast your eyes on, on some pretty, yeah, some man. of the best seafood there is. Okay. I'm, second I'm, question. I'm a seafood kid my whole life. No, well, that's good. As you someone who grew up in Seattle who is not actually a seafood person, like I guess we're just the polar opposites then. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> just just pause for one second here, TJ. You, speaking of seafood while we're on the topic, you caught a fish at Pike Place, didn't you, Ty? Yeah, that, that thing, yeah, that straight <laughs> bear fish. Yes. Yeah. I'm not a, like, I'm not like an animal guy. Uh-huh. Um, like I, I have a, I have two dogs, but if, if that dog, if the dog's not my dog, I'm not like a dog person. Uh, I don't like bugs any like thing any animal that's not like mine i hate it like that touching that fish caused like and when i go fishing i shake it off the rod until it falls <laughs> off like i'm not touching that fish and it was so great it didn't have a head either i was just like oh my, my little brother my little brother's complete opposite though he like grabbed it he was looking at it i was like, like so gross <laughs> Well, that's like the that's the introduction to Seattle for any like any semi like famous. I guess you're semi famous in Seattle now, or we could just say famous. We'll just skip all the way to the end of the line. That's always the first stop there. So that that's good. You got that out of the way, Ty. So next, yeah. when you make it to the big leagues, you can go back there again and, and get a second crack at that fish. I'll, okay, I'll I got just this. Have some gloves. <laughs> yeah, there we go. that's a good idea. Second question we have here: uh, your top three favorite TV shows of all time. Tom and Jerry. Um, po- Amazing World of Gumballs got to be up there. <laughs> Sorry, that show is just so good. Tom and Jerry, Amazing World of Gumball, and um, I guess technically Money Heist was a TV show. It was uh, that's more of like the serious ones, but Tom and Jerry is my favorite TV show of all time. I I watched that from like any episode will make me laugh now. So, were you more of a Cartoon Network guy than a Nickelodeon or Disney guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more of a Cartoon Network. Me, me, and my dad just kind of 
chilled around, watched Tom and Jerry, and I, man, that's got it's still the funniest thing. Like I still look back, look back at some now, and um, just it never, never like doesn't make me laugh. <laughs> I don't blame you. I I still laugh watching SpongeBob. And oh, man, so I, I get it. it. Oh, I wasn't allowed to watch SpongeBob when I was growing up. My mom thought it was annoying. It's funny. We weren't allowed to watch it till I was, I don't know, six years old or so. So around first grade, it was the same thing. My my mom thought it was an annoying show, and she's yeah. like, yeah, "I don't want it on." <laughs> I still don't want to. I still think I'm not allowed to. <laughs> well, Tom and Jerry's a good consolation prize. Let's put it like that. Yeah. What would you be doing, Ty? Or do you think you'd be doing if you weren't playing baseball? I'll be a um, probably a computer scientist or a computer engineer. Or I would be working my butt off to get on the PGA Tour. How crazy would that be? I I just want to be good at golf. Like, if I can do anything, like, I think I would seriously drop, like, an, like one attribute of my life to be able to golf well. Like, really well. Or sing. To be able to sing. I would, like, I think I would drop something serious that I that I can do to sing. You're going to fit right in with some of the guys in the organization. We do some of these like social media segments with some of the players, and we ask them, what's the skill you want to master? And a couple of them said golf, and a couple of them said singing. So you're right in that Dude, line. If I can golf, man, I like, I'm like i shooting like 83 right now. If I can break that 80, I'm going to be set. You must be really excited then for spring training in Arizona. You get a full month and a half down in Arizona. Where, I mean, you get baseball during the day, but then all of a sudden, like, oh, I got four free hours. Right. No, yeah, I'll be golfing every day I can. Like, I was talking to my dad, and he, he was like, my wrist hurt even thinking about how much golf we're going to do in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Okay, your favorite baseball uh, favorite baseball player of all time? Uh, Francisco Lindor. Just kind of like, he's, um, I've, been, I've been looking up to him since I was like 11 or 12. And it's actually funny because I'm, I'm an Angels fan. I've been, well, it's tough to be an Angels fan, but. I've been an Angels fan since I was 11 years old, 10 years, 10, 10 years old, 11 years old. Um, and I finally got to go to a game. This was for my 12th birthday. For my 12th birthday, we went to Ohio when um, Lindor played for the Indians. And um, we go there. We, we watch him play. And I, I, just, I just couldn't watch Trout play. Like, I was watching him play. Like, I was watching Lindor play. Um, and after that, I've been a Lindor fan for a long, long time. There's been plenty of times where I thought I was going to meet Lindor, and I never did. And, like, that's still, like, one thing I want to do. <laughs> I still have never, like, talked to him. It's a pretty good choice. He is he's almost criminally underrated, so. Right. Like, I, I like the way he plays. Like, he plays with passion. He plays – he enjoys the game. He, like, he likes to have fun out there. Like, it's kind of how I play, so. Don't say the Angels thing – don't say the Angels fan thing too loud, Ty. You might, you might get some – you might get under some fan skin with that one. It's so tough to be an Angels. It's so tough. It's all right. I'm slowly, slowly going down. <laughs> well, hey, we'll say it, not you, because we've been trying to speak it into existence on this pod for months now. But maybe that two-way guy will play in this organization in a few months. You never know. You right. Just never know. That would be crazy. My mom would flip. That's my mom's favorite player. She would flip. Oh, that's and cool. And I, met, and I met Ichiro. Oh. And my mom is jealous. <laughs> that's a cool one that, i mean yeah, yeah he's still always around like taking fly balls and out on the field yeah, cool, yeah, right? yeah. crazy okay last one for you if you were to make your big league debut sure. today you're walking up to the plate you're probably filled with adrenaline your first at bat is coming up what song's blasting on the well, loudspeakers for your walk-up song well wait hold on hold on, hold on. you okay. cut out what will happen oh, okay yeah just we do that now? again lyle okay yeah just do it again i can't hear okay. you final question if you were to make your big league debut today and you were walking yeah. up to the plate, you're filled with adrenaline, your first at bats coming up, what song's blasting on the loudspeakers for your walk up song? Yeah, my walk up song lately, it's been uh, I Just Want to Love You, Jay Z and Pharrell. That's been my walk up song um, for a little bit and it just gets me pumped. Oh, it sounds so good. Uh, I'm, I'm more of like the, the old school, old school rap if I ever do some, or I would do Thuggish Ruggish Bone. <laughs> I would do that, but I, I'm more of an old school guy, so I'm definitely gonna have something blasting old school this this upcoming week because we got a home home opener. So uh, I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna have that old school stuff blasting. I love man. I love I love music. I love music. 
So do we, and, and we're we're big R and B and hip hop guys too. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you're much of a Travis Scott fan, but we like had like mixed opinions about Utopia, where I thought it was okay. TJ loved it. Yeah, really. Yeah. I liked a couple songs off of it. Um, I think Meltdown. See, I'm like telekinesis. That's where I like path over to because I just like yeah. the like the vocals. That's, I'm on the vocal. That's guy. probably my number one song on the album, right there. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I know it was pretty good, but I'm telling you, like, I'm more of like the Alicia Keys. Okay. Um, I've actually started listening to old Drake a lot. Old Drake, um, obviously J. Cole. Usher is probably my top artist. List, like on that little Apple Music replay. Usher is probably my top artist. Um, and then behind is probably Daniel Caesar, Alicia Keys. Um, Bruno Mars is up there. Who else do I usually listen to? Uh, yeah. Usher's up. Oh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's yeah. up there too. It's a good list of artists. on like shows. I used to put on shows for my parents when I was like six. Michael Jackson stuff. What was your go-to? Mi- everything. What was your go-to Michael Jackson song? The way you make me feel. Okay. No business singing that when I was like six, but <laughs> I was I was singing it. We love it, Ty. This has been so awesome. We've had a blast sitting here, getting to know you a little bit. Hopefully, Mariners fans have gotten to know you a little bit, and you're our guy now. I mean, we haven't had that many players on yet since we've only been doing this a few months, but you're our guy. Well, I mean, when you're going off in the minors and moving your way through the system, I mean, you'll see us hyping you up and retweeting your highlights and all that stuff. So this has been awesome. We appreciate it all the time. Yeah, this is cool. I love, I love the fun questions. I'm, I'm all about that fun question stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Ty P because man, we had a blast. I've got a little bit of a take here, TJ. You tell me if this is fair. I think Ty Pete's about to become a fan favorite very quickly. I really hope he picks up the idea I pitched him of letting him do like a Julio-like show because he seems to be the one with the nose for media with with his YouTube channel. I mean, he'll try and showcase it on that, but once the Mariners see how much he's willing to market himself personally, then why not? Especially if he keeps going off in the minor leagues and he's going to shoot up top 100 prospect lists. I don't see why you you wouldn't do that. I mean, what a fun personality. I I was mentioning to you, I talk to athletes all the time here in Corvallis because, you know, we're around Oregon State. Our station covers many Oregon State athletics. We talk about them all the time. We talk to a bunch of different athletes. Rarely do we ever get that much personality out of anyone because, you know, interviews can get kind of short and they're all with with a PR person and it's all like, you know, some of these athletes are all cagey with their answers and aren't don't really like talking to the media. And I understand that's fine, but it was so nice to get some real, genuine personality and interest out of Ty Pete. He, he didn't have to be that way. He could have just answered our questions and went on. But no, he decided that he wanted to show us more of his personality and things that he actually likes and his interests and what he wants to do on the field and off the field and things he thinks he's good at and all these other things. And I just to say how much I really appreciate that because I think not only does it make the interview better, it makes the podcast better and it makes the conversation better as well. And less awkward because these, these interviews can all be awkward. We don't know each other. We're, like Ty's meeting us for the first time, but at the end of the conversation, it felt like we'd known him for a lot longer than that. So it feels like what you just said is long-winded answer. Yes, he's got a chance to be a real fan favorite here. Yes. Yes. I've got to say, I mean, look at what he's interested in. He likes baseball, content creation, and hip-hop music. In other words, he can co-host every week with us if he wants. And golf. Yeah, and golf. Although, I don't know if we can exactly match up with Ty Pete on the links. I can't really... I can't really play golf to save my life. No, I can't either. So he can he can keep that to himself. But you're right. Yeah, he could. He can get tribute. Yeah. Well, as he knows, he's got an open platform anytime he wants. But we certainly enjoyed the conversation with Ty. Again, we really hope you guys did too. And with that, that'll just about wrap up this edition of the Marine Layer Podcast. You guys know the drill. If you want to listen to the full form podcast, you can do so on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Amazon. If you do that, make sure to follow us, download our episodes, leave us that five-star review. The reviews and the downloads really help us out. Then head over to YouTube too. Hit subscribe, like, comment, turn those notification bells on. And on social media, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube shorts at Marine Layer Pod. One more time, get 
out to the ballpark for the Angels series. Let Shohei Otani know you want him. I have to throw that in there one more time. That's TJ. I'm Lyle. As always, we thank you guys for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.